So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. Just Lord. Oh, I will sing hallelujah till you come again. And I'll dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. his name we exalt him this very morning Living God, it's 
There is no one like our God. 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 Yes, there is no one like our God. No one, no one, no one, no one. We bless his name. No one like this God. Yes, Lord. You are the living God. Thank you, Lord. You. you are the living God, God. as no one like you. You are the living God. You are the living God, as no one like you. How far are you prepared to give God your everything? How far are you prepared to give God your everything? How far are you prepared to give God your everything? How far? Because there is no God like Him. No God like Him. Lord, we honor you this morning. As your word comes forth, that thy, O God, shall come and teach us. Give us counsel, wisdom. Let the power of God be present to heal, deliver, strengthen, and encourage your people. Lift us up out of the miry clay. Place our feet on a solid rock. Break every shackles of the enemy. Break every bondage of darkness. Break every bondage of sickness. Break every bondage of infirmity. Break every bondage of darkness over your people. And cause light to come upon the life of your people. May every situation receive life. That at the sound of my voice, everyone that is weak, may they receive strength. Everyone that is facing a challenge, may they receive life. May answers come unto your people. May anything that is broken be mended. May anything that is damaged be repaired. May anything that is spoiling be rectified. Life unto the dead situations. And Father, we pray as according to the scriptures that states that the wicked one shall become a ransom for the righteous. May any wicked power any wicked spirit, any wicked thing that contends against our life, may it become a ransom for our sake. In the name of Jesus. He says, The transgressor for the upright. He says, And the Lord God has broken forth upon our enemies. Thank you for breaking forth for us this morning. Thank you for breaking forth for us this morning. As a rush and mighty wind, we thank you. As the waters break forth, we thank you. That you have broken forth for us. Lift your hands and say that, Lord, I thank you for breaking forth for my life. I thank you for breaking forth for my life. Every word of God spoken about my life is coming to pass right now in Jesus' name. Every word of God spoken about my family comes to pass right now in Jesus' name. Every word of God spoken about my finances comes to pass right now in Jesus' name. Every word of God spoken about my health comes to pass right now in Jesus' name. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am rising and not falling. I am progressing and not slacking. I have peace and I have joy in Jesus' mighty name. And the church shall say a great amen.
look at someone next to you and tell them that the lord is doing something new in your life the lord is changing things for you the lord is turning things around the lord is making things work for you acts 2 17. the lord is doing so much for us we bless his name by the grace of god hopefully today we will finish this message on 100 percent i'm praying also that the lord will give you unusual financial miracles I'm asking God to give you unusual financial miracles. <laughs> yeah, some people, you get so comfortable that when great things are even being said, you still receive it as if somebody is greeting you good morning. That's why some miracles take long. You see, because how you react to the word of God is how God will react to you. If you hear such things and then you receive it as if I'm saying good morning, then you don't know where you want to go in life. I have spent the last several hours this morning praying, and I was finally, I was just praying at the back there. The Lord was saying to me, unusual financial miracles. And then I thought that I made, I, I, I made the seed. I made a seed for myself and my family. But then whilst I was writing the seed, the Lord said that when you go to the pulpit, allow the people to also experience it. You see? So when we come here, we are not coming to talk. I don't come here to motivate you. I'm not a motivator. I am a speaker of the good news of God. And I carry God's mantle. So when I declare things that God says to tell you, don't receive it as if I'm greeting you. I'm not greeting you. I'm giving you an opportunity for you to access God in its entirety. I don't need to come and motivate you. I don't need to motivate you. No. There's no need for that. If I need to motivate people, I'll do something that they'll pay me money. What I speak, I can speak so that they pay me money. Nah. We, are, we are saving lives. Taking people out of bondages. We are, we are turning destinies around. And the reward comes from our Father. That is why I don't look at your face to declare the message to you. Because you can't pay me. The only one that can pay me is who? God. So please, take God serious. 100% is all you are teaching. You. Take God serious. Because God is not, a, it's not a, your friend. Though. He's not like some classmate. God is everything you need in this world. You will run for everything except God. And you wonder why things are, are going the way it's going. You run for everything except God. Everything you run for it except God. You run for money. You run for jobs. You run for certain things. You run for connection. You run for this. The only thing people are not running for is God. But God is what we all need in our life. If a man gains the whole world, and then loses the soul. You see, but why a lot of believers are getting this wrong is because you don't, you know, as far as you are concerned, your soul is secure because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And that is what you believe. But the problem is accepting him alone is not sufficient because you need to live a better life than what you are living now. No, you cannot just say, I've accepted him. No, 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 no. You can still lose a lot because... You didn't take Christianity any serious than what you are doing now. You just want to go to heaven and just go and be go, go and be present. Just be one of the people who went to heaven. Is that all you want? You're living your life, working hard, living your life, working hard, toiling, going through so many things. And then, and, and that is all that you are looking up to. No, something better than that. In the last days, God says, I shall pour my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. In the last days, God says, listen to this. God says, I will pour my spirit upon. I will pour out, actually. I will pour out. Huh? I will pour out my spirit 
upon all people. God is talking. I'm teaching you 100%. God, even God, concerning his spirit, he did not hold back anything. God himself. Do you know this is God's spirit? Even he himself, concerning his spirit, he has not held back 1% of it. He says, I am pouring out all of my spirit to who? To all people. God has not held back anything. Nothing. He gave us his son. He gave us life. Now, he's also giving us all of his spirit. So why are you behaving the way you are behaving? It's my question to you. Why? <laughs> why? He says, I have poured out all of my spirit upon all people. Why? Why have you, what have you done for Christ? What have you done for the church? What have you done for your community? What have you done for your family? What have you done concerning your life? Which you have not done for God. What have you done concerning your life? Which you have not done for God. You need to think about that. There are things you've done for your life. But you haven't done it for God. Right? You've done certain things for your life. But you have not done it for God. See, you normally people will say that. Um, let's look at some of the things that people say that, you know, make, make us think that we are giving God 100%. There are certain things that makes us, makes us think we are giving God 100%. One of them, someone will say, name some, name some. You name some, even before I start telling you some of mine. What are some of the things you think you do that makes you think I'm giving God 100%? Just shout out some. Shout some. Prayer, yeah, because you think I pray, I pray, so I'm giving God 100%. Okay, what else? Worship, I'm worshiping God, so I give God 100%. Huh? Offering, I'm giving offering, so I give God 100%. Coming to church early, I mean, that's a deep one. Coming to church early, because the early has got emphasis. That means you are not a late comer. I come to church very early. Oh, that's 100%. Pastor, this 100% you are saying, when I check everything, I'm giving offering, I pray, I worship, I am coming to church early. What more do you want, Pastor? What more do you want? Uh -huh. I donate to poor people. Pastor, I have covered everything. I even have a standing order that goes to save our children. I have a standing order that goes to Red Cross. I have a standing order that goes to Oxfam. I am doing everything, Pastor. This 100%, I still don't get it. <laughs> hey. I show up in church every day. Well, that doesn't mean you are giving God 100%. Many people show up in church just to be counted as a number. Hmm. <laughs> See, sometimes some people say that, oh, well, well, pastor calls me because I didn't come to church. Who told you? It doesn't put money in my pocket when you show up in church. No, 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 no. The church doesn't pay me. And I pray to God that the church will never pay me. So that what? I will be a blessing. Okay, the Bible says, he says what? He says that the borrower is a servant to the lender. The borrower is a servant to the lender and will always remain a servant to the lender. It doesn't matter the, the amount of Holy Ghost in you. If there, someone lends you money, you are a servant to them. You, just, you know why? Because when they cough, you are even thinking they are asking you for their money. When they cough, you think they are asking you for their money. Do you get it? Cough, not talk. Cough. When you meet them on the road and they go past you and they say, <coughs> Do you know what goes through your mind? Oh, your mind is scattered. You're thinking, Hey, this person, this is, 
Then if you, especially if you are working with somebody, you tell that person that, did you, did you hear him chuckle and say, <clears throat> why? Because you owe the money. God is not a liar. He knows everything. So our prayer is that the Lord will bless us so much that we will be a lender to nations. You see, this is a high level. We are not thinking of... So look, change your mindset to if God brings you to me, he brought you so that you can enjoy wealth and prosperity. Are you getting it? Great grace is what God has given us. We are going to be lenders to nations. I'm telling you, mark it on this wall and see you will start hearing it. We will be lending to nations, not individuals. Nations. That means individuals is nothing. That one is just daily practice. We see them, we bless them. We see them, we bless them. We don't, we're not going to lend to individuals. We will bless them. The wealth God gives to me, I don't need to borrow you money. I just need to give you money to sort your problems out. Nations are the people we lend to because we need to get money back to push the kingdom of God. Raise your perspective. Say to someone, raise your perspective. Raise your perspective. Don't just be a church goer. Don't, church Don't just be a church goer. Church. Some people just show up in church because of a lady that they are eyeing. They show up. They will be in church every Sunday. If the lady will be in church, they will be in church. You get up, you dress, you put your tie on like I put my tie on. You come into church because of a, a woman. And then you tell me that I'm giving offering. I'm praying. I'm paying my tithe. I am, I, am, I, am, I am early in church. Is that 100%? Do you know why? Because your focus that brought you to the presence of God was not God. It was a lady. You meet people sometimes, you are talking to them, they say that, Pastor, I'm looking for a wife or a husband. Have you got women in your church? I mean, Isaac, I mean, you laugh. That's the way this matter is. You ask me, have you got women? I said, we've got a lot of young women there. Why should I say no? Have we not got women here? Yeah, they should come. They should come. When they come, then I can talk to them. That's what you are doing is not 100%. You came here to look. I came to talk to you. Let's sort you out before you get one of these women. And if you don't check, get, check yourself out, you will not get one. Because you have to come and see me. And I need to vet whether you are genuinely a man that wants to marry this woman for a good purpose. Or you are just coming to mess around some of our, our wonderful women here. I say, go and do something else. It's not in this house. Some people go to church just because they've seen a guy they like. Have you not seen that is even more dangerous? Women pursuing men. Women pursuing men. The woman is always showing up, smiling to the brother when he's not even asked him anything. <laughs> See the guy smiles. Smile. Then the boy starts to get worried. The man is starting to get a bit confused. What is going on? Why is this girl smiling to me like that? Have you not seen them like that? Sometimes you go onto the tube. You sit down. And, and as soon as you sit there, a lady is looking at you like that. They smile. Ah, then I'll be reading. I lift my head up. Then they smile again. I say, when I lift my head down, I'll not take it up again. Because I don't want to see their face smile to me again. <laughs> and when they come to church, they do that to you as well. Smile, smile, smile. You see? Some of you, to because of your wrong attitude, when the man smiles like that, you just, you just squeeze your face. That is not good. Sometimes, if that man or someone God wanted to marry you, because of that thing you've just done, they will never look at you again. Because this thing has two, and two sides. So it can be what God wants. And it can also be what God doesn't want. But your attitude can check you out. Some of you, you miss the people you were meant to marry because your attitude was... You, it showed up before they even married you. They made an appointment with you. And then they said that, they said that I'll be coming at 10 o'clock. And then they got there 10.15. As soon as they got there, you're standing there. Is, is, is this the kind of man you are? You cannot keep time. You don't want to know what happened. You are not interested in that part of it. I am not interested. Anyway, let's go. Let's go and have the dinner. Hey! Do you think after that, that man will come back for you again? 
And you say that, I sing. I love God. I am an intercessor. I am this. I've never missed my tithe. But sister, your life is not correct. So it's not 100%. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. What have you been up to since you became born again? What have you been up to since you became born again? What have you been doing since you started to go to church? What have you been doing whilst working as a church musician? Whilst working as a church minister? Whilst ministering in songs? What have you been doing? What have you been doing since going to church and, and just sitting down on the pews? You come and you just sit down on this chair. Then you are just sitting. Every Sunday you just come here just to sit on this chair just to listen to Pastor Ado. Every Sunday. Is that all? What more are you doing for God? Okay, let's get her water, please. I know, 100%, that's what it does. It makes you laugh, and then... But whilst you're laughing, the good thing is is that it's giving you checks and balance, checks and balance. (laughs) What have you been doing when you go to church and you go for the other functions and associations? What do you do when you are out? What do you do? What have you been doing when you are in places where no one from church is? 100%. When you are in places where no one from church is, what do you do there? For that is the main test. You can come here and then when we, as soon as we start ministering, because there's only church folks here. The moment you leave and you go to some function, you turn around, you don't see any church person there. Then now uh, you start putting on the mascaras that you don't bring here. You paint your eyes like something that I've never seen here. Because you know when, you, when I see it here, I'll call you. If your dressing becomes very dangerous, I'll tell you. So I don't want you to be offended. I'll have to tell you. Because you need to be decent. You need to be decent. The gospel is decent. And the gospel correct, so we will tell you the truth. What have you been doing when you are left alone? When you are alone, what have you been doing? Teaching you 100%. I don't want this message to finish, and then you still remain where you are in your life. It will be a disaster. Because you are not going anywhere. How many things have you done when you have had the chance to do it well? Sometimes you sneak to do things which are not right. You sneak to do things which are not right. What have you done since you came to know Jesus? Apart from just going to church, what else do you do? What else do you do? Apart from supporting members of your family, apart from supporting people in the community, since knowing Christ, who have you spoken to about the love of God? 100%. The message of God is not only left with you. The message of God must be continuous and you must share it with everyone you come into contact with. People must get to know that you have an experience with God. How many people have you spoke to about the love of God, about the genuineness of God, about the strength of God? When people are going through challenges and then you come in contact with them, what do you do? Do you discourage them? Someone will say that, oh, I think you should um, go and seek for some counselor. Why can't you tell the person they should go and pray? Why? Why can't you tell them they should just go and pray? Heaven is waiting to play back to you your works. Heaven is waiting to play back to every one of us our works. What we did here on earth. Heaven is waiting to play it back. Let that be at the back of your mind. Every time you are doing something, just just see that picture. That heaven is waiting to what? Play back your life to you. Heaven is waiting to play back to you exactly what you did since coming on this planet. God will show all of us, including those who said there is no God, exactly what we came to do on this planet. 
And this will determine what you make or what you get or what will happen when you arrive at the gates of heaven. To determine it. What level do you think you are right now as I'm speaking? Are you 5%? Are you 10%? Are you 15%? Are you 30%? Are you 50? Are you 120%? What level do you think you are? This is self-reflection. Very, very important. This message is doing a lot of things. It's healing people. It's directing you. It's causing you to look into yourself again. What level do you think you are? You need to know. People, you, you, that one, I cannot tell you. You, need, you are the only person who knows what you are genuinely doing one-to-one. -one. From Monday to Monday, you only know what you do. What level do you think you are? Let's not be deceived. If you are ready to give God 100%, your attention, focus, direction will not be on a lady or a man or someone. It doesn't matter. Right? If you are ready to give God 100%, your attention, your focus, your direction will not be on any other person as a first priority. No. Because if you are giving God 100%, he becomes the number one priority. Every other thing becomes second. So what we're saying is, you cannot be in a space where you are giving God a hundred and then you are also giving other things 120%. That means it's not right. The highest percentage needs to go to who? To God. Very, very important. Very, very important. Some people will show up to church. This message is normally for, hundred, uh, for believers. Oh, because I'm bored. These are some of the things we do that we think we're giving God 100%. That's what I'm saying. I am bored. So they, they come to church just to come and kill their boredom. You see? What is the problem? The problem is the motive behind your coming. That's what we are saying. Coming to church is great. But if the motive is to kill your boredom and not to seek God, then you are not giving God 100%. You must seek God and then still replace that boredom. That is important. So you don't need to sit at home. You need to be in the presence of God's people. And that will be good. But your ultimate reason for being there, one, should be seeking God, and then two, to fellowship with the people you meet. That is the beauty about it. That is the beauty. That is the beauty. Others come to church because they are looking for some miracle. The moment the Lord gives them the miracle, they start to get some good reasons not to be consistent with God. You are not giving God 100%. Listen to this. Excuses are no good reasons to not meeting your obligations to God. Right? I take it again. Excuses are no good reasons to not meeting your obligations to God. <laughs> if you have an obligation to God, you cannot give him an excuse and think it's a good reason. It doesn't change the fact that you have not met the obligation. When he says pray daily, you cannot give him an excuse to say my body was aching so I couldn't pray. It is an excuse and you are not meeting the obligation. When he says, love your neighbor as thyself, and you choose not to love somebody because they have just said something that you dislike, it does not give you an excuse not to love them. You are not meeting your obligation to God. Excuses are a way of appeasing our conscience at the expense of doing what is right. That's what excuses are. Excuses are a way of appeasing your conscience at the expense of doing what is right. When you need to do, do what is right, sometimes you will find an excuse to just make your conscience settle. No. Excuses are the way that a person seeks to justify their actions. That's what excuses mean. You are justifying your actions by your excuses. You are not in competition with God. Neither is God expecting you to be somebody you are not. That's not what God wants. 
This 100%, God is not saying be somebody you are not. God wants you to be honest. Be yourself. But don't give excuses in order to justify an action to God. It's not necessary. If, you are, if, if being yourself means you missing church, missing meeting, missing reading of the Bible, not consistent in your tithes, not consistent in your offering, not consistent in prayer, then you have to work on that. Because someone will say that, oh, pastor, I'm being myself. Well, so being yourself means you are missing reading the Bible and you think you are being yourself. That is not consistent with the word of God. So you need to work on it. You need to work on it. Someone may ask, can anyone be 100%? Yes. We have to worship him wholly and totally. Does it mean we stop work and just come and sit down in church? No. That's not what it means. But giving 100% is more than just showing up in church. It's a way of life. Right? Giving 100% is more than showing up in church. So just coming here on Sunday is not the 100% we are talking of. It is part of it. The 100% is a way of life. How you sleep. How you eat. How you wake up. What you do when you are home. What you do when you are outside. Everything you are doing must add up to what? A hundred percent. Being conscious of your movement. Being conscious of your day-to-day interaction with people. Being conscious of how you talk to other people. Being conscious of how you relate to your family. Being conscious of how you relate to your colleagues at work. Being conscious of how you relate to people in the community. And then the people in the church. All of it a holistic relationship life is what makes you 100%. When you know how to smile to people, when they are hurting, you know how to reach out to them. When you, someone needs help, you know how to speak to them. When someone is so upset, you still know how to talk to them. And when you need to pray, you know that you go down and you pray. You are doing what you need to do at the right time and not finding excuses to exit. 100%. 100%. Your language must be 100%. Your dressing must reflect him. Your conversations must reflect him. Your secret doings must reflect him. Your relationships in and outside of church must reflect him. Your attitude must reflect him. Your life, your prayer style, your daily living must all be consistent and focused. If you fall in this category or do this or are currently reflecting on this, then you are getting towards a hundred percent. But the church today doesn't like that. They want us to just come and keep saying that the Lord is increasing you, the Lord is promoting you, the Lord is changing you. When you are doing certain things wrong, you cannot get increase. Sister, let's not deceive ourselves. There are certain things, if you keep doing it, you will never get increase. And it's not any witchcraft or any demon from anywhere. It is your own life. If you can give God 100%, then you can expect to receive 100% from him. If you can give him. If you can give him. If you can give him 100%. Are you giving to show off? Talking about 100%. Someone says, well, I give, I give an offering to God. Are you giving to show off? Because it could be giving to show off. And it means it's not really 100% because God is not interested in people that just show off. God is not interested in that. We have to review the reasons why we act in some ways. We have to reconsider who is the end person we are trying to get the attention. That's very important. Who is the end person? Whose attention is our church services aiming at? Whose attention is our giving aiming at? Whose attention is our dancing church aiming at? Whose attention is your worship aiming at? Whose attention is your daily services aiming at? Whose attention is your dressing aiming at? Whose attention is your prayer aiming at? Whose attention is your conversations aiming at? Whose attention? When you come to church, whose attention is it aiming at? It shouldn't be me. It should be our God. Because I come here aiming at God. So if you come and you are aiming at me, you are missing it. 
Because I don't have anything to offer you. God has everything to offer us. The Lord will work through me to do something for you. But you don't need to look to me as the answer. The answer is Christ. And together, we go and we get what you need. That is what we do. We go and we get what you need. Your services can be considered a mockery or a laughter if it was aimed at getting the attention of a pastor. Right? Your services can be considered a mockery or a laughter if it was aimed at getting the attention of a pastor or somebody else. Right? You understand it? Are you understanding it? You are very quiet. You don't like truth. Truth is very, it's very sharp. It's like knife. It's cutting you. It's good. I'm very happy. Because the truth works. Your giving may be limited to the room you, are, you sit in. If it was to get somebody's attention other than God. You know, some people, they give just to get people's attention. They go to a place that is, a lot of people are there. They say, okay, well, I think it's time for me to stand up and also go and let them know I have some money. And they take it and they go and put it in the offering. Well, that giving is limited to the room. That's what I'm telling you. It doesn't go beyond that room. Because the focus was not for God. That is telling every one of us that whatever we do, if the ultimate focus is not God, then it is what? It can be limited to where you are sitting. How many of us have not said, we've done this thing for God, we've done this thing for church, but then you knew the ultimate focus was trying to get the attention of someone. You didn't do it for God. You didn't. You didn't. Matthew 6:33. Matthew 6, 33, NLT. He says, but many people recognized them and saw them living. And people from many towns ran ahead along the shore. No, that's not, that's not the scripture. Yes, please. Matthew 6, 33. Sorry. Let me, yeah, because I knew the one I've got here. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The New Living Translation says that, Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and God will give you everything you need. That's what we are talking about. Those that seek God, those that live righteously, those that pursue God, God gives them everything they need. Sometimes you, start, why is it, you see some people, you realize that everything is working well for them. Do you know why? Because they are seeking God consistently. They are pursuing his love. They are pursuing him wholeheartedly. And they get everything. The more diligently you seek him, all that concerns you, the Lord will restore. The Lord will do for you. The doorway to your miracle is pursuing God holy. Holy. 1 Timothy 4.15. Holy. The Bible says, give thyself holy unto God. See, it says, meditate upon these things. Give what? Thyself what? Holy to them. And what does it say next? That thy profiting may appear to all. Give thyself holy. The message translation says that, do you have the message? Okay, the message translation says that cultivate these things. Immerse yourself in them. The people will all see you mature right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. It's not a figure of speech. It is a truth the Bible is telling us. Both your character and your teaching, if you keep it right, everybody will see what God is doing in your life. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody will see it. 
You have to first of all release all those things totally to him and let him have you all. After he has you all, then your husband, your wife, your partners, your children, your family, everything else can have you. Everything else can have you. You cannot pause on your way to worshiping God and say that I need to go back and spend some time with my husband. You cannot do that. You cannot be in the middle of prayer and then just say that, oh, I've seen this test message. Some of you be praying, a test message just comes. You stop, your phone is ringing. You stop the prayer. You go and pick your phone. I mean, what kind of lifestyle is this? You say you were praying. Whilst praying, your phone rings. You can't finish the prayer. And sometimes too, whilst praying and the phone rings, you cut the prayer short. You end it and you pick the phone and go and answer. When you finish it, don't go back to prayer. No. These are things we've all done. We've all done it. I'm not telling you things that only you, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. No, no, no. I have done it. That's why the Lord used it to teach me. I've told you a thousand times. God doesn't bring me a word to give to you because you need it. He looks at my life and gives me a word because I need to learn something. When he finishes, he says, now you have mastered it. Go and teach my people. Pray, 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 pray. I'm expecting some powerful miracle. I'm looking for some phone call to come. It doesn't matter how deep I was. I check. I check. If it's not that one, then I carry on. Bring, 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 the Lord is breaking it. The Lord is giving it to me. I am receiving a miracle that changes it. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So when are we meeting? <laughs> because it has some money to do with the call. <laughs> money is associated to the call. So I pause the, the prayer with God just to go and sort out that money matter. That's not hundred percent. It's not. It's not hundred percent. All all of us have done that. If you haven't done it, make sure you don't do it. Mm. Be consistent with God. Do you know why? Because if you diligently stay in the presence of God, it doesn't matter what is about to come to you through that phone call. It will wait. When, God fin when you finish with God, the call will come. You will never miss a blessing. Never miss a blessing. A pastor that was preaching like, said this thing. He said that when sometimes you leave your work just to come here, or you leave your business just to come here to listen to the word of God and to fellowship, he says, don't you think God knows that you have left it? God knows it. He knows what you would have earned whilst you were working or whilst you were meant to be doing that business. And for the fact that you have left it to come in his presence, when you go, he will make sure you recover what you were meant to get plus the next money. You will not miss anything. But what God is looking for is whether you are obedient enough to come and fellowship or whether you will wait for the money. When you wait for the money and you come, you don't get anything. That money, how much is left? Check it. The last, the last shift you went. Check it. You know it yourself. I don't have to tell you. You know your bank account better than me. The last shift you went, the money that came in, how much of it is left to be? That's how I'm speaking. If you come and say, come and give me 3,000 now, some of you be sweating. I'm sweating. My pastor has asked me for money. Oh, you don't have the money. Why? Church say we need to buy something urgently and we need to get it. Everybody's knocking their head. Meanwhile, you are the same people that when it's time for when it's time for church, sometimes you are not even here. You are busy working. The money you are getting to, if God wants more, to just do the place well, so that you yourself will sit in and the guests will be blessed. The money is not coming. So why are you working? Is it only to get your own house? Don't you did you not read in the scriptures when he said that you have built 
you have built sealed houses, houses that are comfortable and luxurious, and you live in, whilst the house of God is left in ruins. Have you not read it in the scripture? He was talking to the people of God, and he said, you need to sort yourself out and make sure that my house is put in order. You know, some of you, the, the, the reason why you are working so much is because you just want to do something in your own house. Not, not that you are working to say that, Pastor, Jenny, God will bless you, okay? God will bless you. Did you hear me? Yeah. You know, she was saying last time, well, we just finished one day, and I think after one, one service, and then she said that she felt the, Lord, the Holy Spirit was telling her that she, she, that she, she, she should get money. The next money she gets, she should use it to buy chairs for the church. Do you know what it means? When your love for God starts to grow and you connect, the things that provoke the unusual is what you start to do. These things provoke the unusual. Do you know why? Because her focus is not on that. And because her focus is on that, God will cause everything possible to come to her to allow her to get that so that she can be a blessing to the church by buying those chairs. That is what we are talking about. Look, people, some of you heard it. You say it was an error. You don't know where it came from. You will keep it to yourself because the, the first person you want to be telling or the last person you want to be telling is your pastor. Because the moment you tell your pastor, you have made... It almost indirectly a very serious statement. But do you know why? That provokes me to also be in prayer for her. To say whatever the Lord laid on her heart, may the Lord open the avenues of heaven so that money will not be dry in this girl's hand. Yeah. <coughs> you are sitting there, you are saying, hey, 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 how can I buy chairs? How can I buy chairs? How will you get the money then? If you don't want to take a step, how will it happen? If Peter did not lift his leg to go into that water, do you think that he would have walked on the water? He would never have tasted it. <coughs> the fact that you must place God at the top of your house and life. You must place God at the top of your house and life. The fact that you may always be with a pastor or a bishop doesn't mean you are giving God 100%. You can be always working with a pastor every day. It doesn't mean you are giving God 100%. To. 100% is more about what you do with your life. Today, there are so many people who are giving 100% to their pastors, elders, bishops, at the expense of God's 100%. Right? There are people giving 100% to their pastors, to their bishops, at the expense of God's 100%. Are we saying that you don't need to give your pastor 100%? You have, but not at the expense of God's 100%. You must first get the 100% right with God, and then you get 100% with your pastors. Then the blessing will come to you. So what does it mean? It means simple things like that. So if your pastor calls you for something, you will be there because your bishop has called you and you need to go and then make sure that, oh, bishop is coming. Because everybody knows that, oh, I'm the one that bishop calls when everything happens. When we say we are going for evangelism, you come up with an excuse. You are giving your bishop 100% at the expense of 100% to God. Why do you get an excuse when it's an evangelism time? But when your bishop calls, you don't get the excuse. People of God, let me tell you something. Just move, God, so then I can close with it. Let me tell you something. <laughs> God cannot be mocked. God cannot be mocked. You cannot choose your own way of doing things whilst being in church and expect to get 100%. There are so many people today, they come to church, but they don't take the pastor's advice from the pulpit. They try to live their own lives outside without using the mirror of God to reflect and check on their lives. You are not 100%. You are not 100%. You are not giving God 100%. If you watch the main scripture in 2 Chronicles 15, 15, in order, in order to come into the position where you are giving God the total unwavering 100%, you must take your life, your worship, your service, your attitude, things to God, and all that concerns God, including the church, 
as if you are in a court making an oath where you can't lie or go back on your word else you will not start living the people of judah gave god a hundred percent in everything lifestyle language talking whole desire whole desire if see, it's not a hundred percent if something is missing even by half a percent right if it's 99.9 .9, it's not hundred percent and you cannot justify it to god hundred percent holy here means a hundred percent someone said pastor but i'm trying do more do more do more do more They gave God 100%. The reason why many of us are not moving on as fast as God has planned for us is because we are only doing what we do facially. We have not engaged our total heart in what we do for God. So many people are talking more than doing things. It's easy to talk, but do it and let's see. How many of you have not got advice for the church? How many of you have not got advice for some of your family members? But are you doing the right thing yourself? Are you doing it? Many people are talking more, showing off more than sticking to the commitment from their heart. If you want to be serious and make a difference in life, you must be prepared to apply your heart to what you are doing. The decision must first be made in your heart and then enforced with your mind and your whole body. Make it in your heart that I will do right, I will live right. Decisions that bring results are made in the heart, not with the mouth. And declared with the mouth and acted upon with your whole being. You are too passive for God. Tell somebody, you are too passive for God. I need to hear you more. This thing is hitting you, but you need to talk. Amen? It's not only you. People listening are also getting blessed by the same message. Too passive for God. You know who a passive person is. You are a reactor. You are a reactor. You wait for something to happen before you react. You don't, you don't, you see, last time me and my wife were watching a program on TV, they were talking about the most luxurious hotels in the world. And then they were just talking about the level of service. Where the people that they were interviewing, the workers, they said that if our guests call us and ask for something, then we have missed the prestigious aspect of our service. We need to forethink what he will want before he comes to that hotel room. That is what we are talking of. They need to forethink what the client will want before he comes to the hotel room if not it's not an exclusive service he says then the prestigious aspect of it is gone why so they they study the client the person that is about to come to the hotel they study who he is what he does what makes him tick and then they start to think about what he will want before he even gets to the hotel reception they said the moment the customer asks us that i want this they have failed in their service. They say then they are like, just like any normal hotel. That's what we are talking about, our service to God. You don't need to wait for God to say something before you do it. No, 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 no. Then you've missed it. Our service must be proactive, not reactive. You don't wait to react to it. So, can you come and sing? Can you come and worship? Can you come for choir practice? Can you come? What is that? What is that? That's reactive service. Total reactive service. Come and pray. Reactive service. We call you to prayer. No, 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 no. Then it's not special. We call you come to church. It's not special because you don't even know the magnitude of the grace of God on your life. Don't know it. 
100%. Some of you are living some lives outside of church. It is not good. It is not good. You are doing certain things. Listen, outside of church, as I speak now, you have huge problems, but you are not even bringing it in to the presence of God. It is not a good thing for you. Big troubles. Big troubles. This message came to prompt you to recheck your life. You see, because the saddest thing, I don't know if that's a good English, but the saddest thing, or my wife normally corrects me if this is my English. I don't know how much I got in English. I passed, anyway. But, at least by you understand what I'm trying to say. The, what, is that saddest? Is it correct? Oh, okay. The saddest thing. Sad, sadder. Sad, sadder. Saddest. Uh, sad, sadder, saddest. Comparative word. Is there sadder? Sada is correct. There's no sada. So what is it? So sad. Sadis. Oh, okay. Oh, most sad. Hey. There's some good English teachers here. Hey. It's good. This is what church is about. It's not everything that you know. Learn to be humble. Don't say, I know everything because I'm the pastor. You don't know everything. You can get it wrong. Take Take people's correction. Else you'll be holding this mic and you miss God. So the saddest thing is when you are doing so much for God. But then because of certain things you are doing outside of the church. When the blessing comes, it never hits your door. Never hits your door. Some of you have got things going on right now. You cannot even share it with people. But that thing is limiting the blessing of God on your life. I'm telling you. Some of you have done certain things. huh? You, you, you have not been faithful. You have not been truly faithful to God. You have lied. And it's an error that is following you. There are people listening to me now. You have done certain things you are never meant to do. In fact, you need to be so careful because if you don't correct it very quickly, it will affect you for the rest of your life. It will, it will, it will, it will. It's not a case. There are certain things when you do, you need to correct it. If you don't correct it, it can affect you for the rest of your life. If you don't get it sorted and you come up with children, it can go on to your children. You need to be very careful. You need to be very careful. I'm closing. <laughs> you need to be so, so careful. You are not stopping the things which is triggering those habits. You are not making mens to things that can help you. You are always running away when the truth is about to be unveiled. And for that reason, you keep distancing yourself from the miracle of God. You should break forth now. But for one reason or the other, something is still not given. And that is because you are not giving God 100%. Some of you should by now have some miracles. You should have had certain answers by now with your life. But they are still not coming. It doesn't matter how much prayer we've been praying. Why? Because there is something that you are still doing which is limiting that blessing. There are prayer topics some of you have been praying on for the last two years, three years, four years, five years. You still haven't got an answer as I'm speaking to you now. It is frustrating you and you don't know why. I'm telling you that there is something you are not doing, which is why you are not getting it. If today you would do a deep search of yourself and then sit down and then try and reflect on what have I not done? Or what have I done that I shouldn't have done? And you change it. Give yourself two days. You will see miracles. Boom, boom. God is not a wicked man. No. God is a loving God. He wants to give us everything we need in this world. But what he cannot do, he cannot compromise with sin. God cannot compromise with sin. He cannot compromise with, 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 with instability. He cannot compromise with people who are two-faced. He cannot compromise with unstable people. The Bible says you are unstable in all your ways. You are like hot boiling water. Expect. Except a man be born again, he or she cannot see the glory of God. You must be a hundred percent. 
You cannot be in the world for 10% and be in God for 90%. It still will not work. It will not work. You cannot be doing things you shouldn't be doing for 1% and still be in God for 99% and still expect things to work. It will not work, sister. Brother, it won't work. If you do 1% of things that you shouldn't do and you do 99% of what you should do, you still will not get the blessing God needs to give you. You won't get it. God cannot be more. Always remember that. Galatians 6, 7. He says that be not deceived. For God is not mocked. For whatsoever. Huh? What so what? Ever. What does that mean? That means everything. Talking to people, relating to people, having fun, doing things. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. You see, the danger is that some of you are yet to reap certain things you did which are wrong. That is what my heart panics about. It's a very dangerous thing. Those things kept me in prayer because I was saying to God, if there are things I've done which are wrong, I am afraid because the reaping of those things will not help my life. So help me, Lord, and forgive me of the wrong I've done so that I don't reap error. Some of you have done certain things. You haven't reaped it yet. You need to be very careful. Run to God for God to intervene. If not, the things you will reap. You know, you'll be reaping blessings. Don't forget that. You will reap blessings because you are still doing some good things. But the bad things you've done, if you don't run to God for mercy, you can reap it. That's why he says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man or a woman does, they will reap it. And God is not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of persons. Deuteronomy 6.15. Hear the word of the Lord. He says that for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. He's a jealous God. Do you see why? He's jealous because when he puts his name on you, you cannot go about just doing what you want and expect him to be happy with you. He's jealous like a man that is married to a woman and is staying faithful to that woman. And the woman becomes to be unfaithful or the man becomes to be unfaithful. One becomes what? Jealous. God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord, thy God, be kindled against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. Do you know why? Sadly, there might be people that have left the face of this earth who were destroyed by God because they provoked the anger of God when they were meant to ask him for forgiveness. You cannot think you are the ogre or you are the almighty chief and you don't respect anybody. A time comes when God gets tired of you. If you don't change your ways, he will say your time is up and close your name in the book the following morning they will be saying you are dead god forbid none of us should be in this position for god to destroy us from the face of the earth because good things are on this earth we need to enjoy it have you not struggled enough eh? me i've struggled enough oh. i've struggled enough i've struggled enough too much struggle too much. So I'm, I ask God, God, I don't want to enjoy the best of life. In my health, in my body, in my finances, everything's got to get right. But how can everything get right if I don't get myself right? I need to get myself right with God so that when I go to his presence, I can be bold and confident enough to say that, God, I need your mercy because your son, I have done everything right that I can do. How many of you can say that? Because last night, some phone call you had with somebody. Only that will even affect you by praying that prayer today. Some of you spoke to somebody last night. The way you spoke. The way you spoke. You can love him more. What type of desire do you have for him? What type of love do you have for him? What type of quest do you have for him? How deep are you genuinely looking for him? Many people are sitting in church today saying they are Christians. Many people are sitting in temples today saying that they are believers. But if we question your faith, if we question your belief, if we question your love, we will find that you are not 100% committed in the journey of your faith. Yeah, I'm closing. 
Many are sitting here in churches today saying, I love God. I worship him. I love you, God. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul. Take joy. Joy, my King. Hey, hey. It is a Let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. You worship like this. And then, guess what happens next? A lot of pretense. A lot of pretense. Your voice is good. Your face is nice. You are dressed very well for the occasion. But pretense is gradually eating you up inside. 100%, we need to be holistic about this. You cannot keep pretending. There are a lot of you listening to me today all over the world. Too much pretense. You are not who you say you are to people. You are hiding things from people. You are not keeping, keeping up with what you promised God that you would do. The walk you started walking, you have, you have slipped off along the way. There are things you were meant to do, you have slipped off along the way. And yet, when we are worshiping, you lift your hands with us and you worship with us. Pretense. God is not interested in pretenders. God is looking for those who pass the test for 100% all in. Say to the next person to you, are you all in? Ask them what is the proof. The truth is that God is all about commitment. God is all about what? Commitment. The truth is that God is all about loyalty. God is all about holy, giving thyself wholly to him. God will rather invest his resources into one small person who has no human connections or popularity than but seeks him wholly and give him everything. Than somebody who is so big and flamboyant and connected but has got too many hidden things in their cupboard. God will rather invest his personality, his resources in that person who is seeking him faithfully. You may have been 30 years in church, but if you still have things in your cupboard, God will, God will walk past you and give it to the person who just joined the church one week ago. And then that's what sometimes people start to get worried. Then they say that, oh, why is it that this person who just came, now he's doing this thing. They get offended, they go. Their arrogance is what kills them. They'll go and find another church and go and start from there. They will never grow. What you know is what you know because you've just been moving churches. You haven't grown in any maturity, I can promise you. Your level is still the same. Because you fail to stay to break the ceiling of arrogance. Did you not hear that he says he looks at the heart? Did you not hear? Why are you always acting to your senses? God is looking at the heart, you are anointed. That somebody just started and they are doing very well more than you. Check your heart. Stop running from churches. Check your heart. People don't want to hear the word of God. Someone said, I mean, I don't like this pastor. He's always telling the truth. Yeah, hey, go. It's okay. If I, if I inhabit iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Acts 10, 34. Listen to this. I'm taking your time. I just need to finish this. I don't want the third part is finished. God is no respecter of persons. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Romans 2.11 also says the same thing. For there is no respect of persons with God. He loves unwavering love. God loves unwavering love. He wants people that can love him. Just as just as he is. Love him like that. Second Chronicles 32, verse 8. Look at Hezekiah. And that's the last scripture. 
Verse 8. He says what? With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. This is 100% too. Listen that. Hezekiah was so dependent on God that when they went into battle, he was telling the people and God, he says that this person, for them, they have an arm of flesh. But we, we have the Lord God to help us and to fight our battles for us. If you are not 100%, you cannot say this to God. Now, do you see why when this guy, the Lord sent a prophet to go and tell him that he should be prepared to die. And he went and looked at the wall and started praying. Look at the kind of prayers he was praying when he was alive. He says, God, the people who are about to fight us, that guy is an arm of flesh. But with us, our trust is in you, and you will fight our battle for us. Look at him. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah. How powerful is your words to even your family members? Check it. Who takes your word in your family? Who takes your word? Some of you, when you talk, nobody wants to hear in your family. Do you know why? Because you don't have the right lifestyle. Sometimes there are people who just don't like you. But the truth is, check your life before you start worrying about people. The people rested on Hezekiah's ways. Check your style. Go to verse 17. Look at something else there. Same place. He wrote also letters to rail on the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, as the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of my hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of my hand. Go to verse 20. And for this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven. This is 100%. 24. In those days, Hezekiah was sick. See, after all these things, the guy became sick to death. And he prayed unto the Lord. And he spake unto him. And he gave him a sign. 27 to 29. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor. And he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all manner of pleasant jewels. Storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil and stalls for all manner of beasts and coats for flock. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance for God had given him substance very much. If you give God 100%, not only will he listen to your prayer when you are in your deepest sorrow or pain or challenges, but God will also bless you. He will bless you so much. All you need is what? 100%. Just give him 100%. Don't hide. Don't play, don't play games with him. Don't like. Don't, you know, don't do things that will affect the blessings of God upon your life. Because the people of Judah, when they did, when they spent the oath and they gave the oath to God, the Bible says, and the Lord gave them rest round about. What are you doing that can jeopardize your chances of getting God's answers? What are you doing that can affect you, the possibility of God blessing your children? What are you doing? Because sometimes you are doing certain things today. You don't know the impact of it. It will affect your children later. What are you doing in your home? What are you doing outside your home? What are you doing? You love God. You are very much, you love God. But you are doing certain terrible things outside of here. If you don't give up, it will affect you. I will ask everyone to bow their heads down. If you are here, okay, no. if you are here and you know Facebook Live is off because I don't want anything to go up, and you know.